Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah wa ba'd in the name of Allah and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his messenger as to what follows family, friends, foes, homies and haters welcome back to the features I welcome, uh, welcome you all with peace and love and serenity assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon all of you so before we begin please like, subscribe, share um, please support me on Patreon. And without further ado, let's get into it. So I, before we begin, I want to apologize first because I'm going to drop a lot of names. And it's not out of malice or anything like that. You know, because I'm going to speak on a personal level, right, for this particular video. And I'm doing it with a purpose. Okay? Because I want the youth to see that not, everything is not everything, okay? <laughs> everything is not everything. And not everything is binary. Not everything is ones and zeros, black and white. You know, there's a lot of gray, okay? So a lot of people ask me, for example, you know, why don't you refute this person, refute that person? They ask me, you know? You know, because, uh, you know, a lot of, if you see my channel, you, you, I guess some of you, well, most of you rather, you've seen some of the refutations I did. And the reason is I don't like refutations. I just don't, I don't, I don't like to do them, right? I'm very scared to do them, to be honest. You know what I mean? And that's why you don't see me all up in every single uh, drama. Uh, you don't see me talking about Yasser Qadi. You don't see me talking about um, Omar Salim. Not of not my videos anyway. You know, you don't see me get involved in that stuff because to me, that stuff is very scary. You know, for me, right? If I refuted you, I refuted you because either you lied, okay? Uh, you were treacherous in some way to the, to the Muslims or you were involved in some sort of um, outlandish criminal activity that affected the Muslim at large. You know what I mean? <clears throat> These are the only reasons why I, I go after people. I don't go after people over dogma. You see what I'm saying? Because to go after the honor of a Muslim is haram. You can't do it. It's not It's not permissible, right? So I have to be like 100% sure <laughs> if I'm going after somebody, right? So why are you saying this? right? Because this type of refutation culture that has been happening since the the I, w I call the Sheikh Rabi era in the, in the mid 2000s, and now you have the social media era, which is much worse, right? This refutation culture it puts people in a box, okay? And because people live in this box, it forces people in a box because you're refuting, right? So you you have you can only you're only allowed to speak to this person, you're not allowed to speak to that person. You see what I'm saying? So now you live in this box, and because you live in this box, you make grand characterizations of individuals well what do you mean well for example Khalid Green for example he says that um, brother Haji is somebody who's trying to destroy Salafia with this channel right and I agree with him in, with his assessment so now you're probably thinking well if that's true then why don't you just refute brother Haji it's quite simple I don't believe in disunity, number one. And number two, I believe the brother Haji believes the stuff that he's saying. He's not doing it uh, out of malice. You understand what I'm saying? He actually, he's actually sincere about his beliefs. Whether I believe what he, he believes is wrong or not is irrelevant. He believes that he's correct. You see what I'm saying? So, before you even start, okay, because I know you guys are going to say, why, why are you defending Brother Jehazi? Like, you don't know me, okay? This is why I said I want to talk on a personal level for, first. You, do you know how many times I talked to Brother Haji? How big arguments we got into? Big arguments. 
because of his channel, because of stuff he puts out on his channel. Massive arguments advising this brother. You know, he's hard-headed, stubborn. He's uh, narcissistic when it comes to his channel. Okay? You know, when he did that uh, refutation on uh, Khaled Green, I told him not to do it. I told him not to do it. Even though Khaled Green, he, he slighted me. And brothers asked me, why don't you refute Khaled Green? I say it because I don't believe in disunity. It's not worth splitting the Muslims over this. It's just not. When, when uh, you know, at least three uh, Duat came after me in a roundabout way for my positions on black nationality, a black national nationalism, and my position on the nation of Islam. So they came after me indirectly. Right? So people were saying, no, go refute. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that because I don't believe in this unity. Right? And plus, Dr. Khalid Green, he's my elder. Right? So I'm not going to go after him because he's my elder. I have to respect my elders. Right? <laughs> right? And I said this. Well, like I said, this. I said this to Brother Haji. You have to respect your elders. Well, like I said that. You can, anybody can ask him. Right, and he went and he did that thing against Call of Green, anyways. Right, so why are you you saying this? I'm saying this because the reason why people go after Salafis is because the Salafis are the ones giving them the ammunition, and I'm going to get into detail about that. Right, what do you mean? Okay. Take, for example, Brother Haji, right? And take, for example, this brother here, uh, Wajdi. And you see how he, he how Wajdi dealt with Abu Toba. But look how he speaks in terms of Dawah Man. Because remember, bro, Brother Haji, his whole channel now is about Shemsi, Dawah Man, and the Mandakula. That's it. That's all he talks about for the last last year now, right? He doesn't talk about anything else, right? <laughs> it's a Shamsi Dawa man, uh, the Madakila, you know, he refutes uh, uh, Salafi scholars here and there, right? But there's a reason for that, and I'm going to get into that, okay? So let's look at what um, uh, Wajdi says. He says, now you have people making tafsik. I guess he's referring to Dawa man, uh, you know, that what Omar Suleiman was doing is fisk. It's a defined disobedience. He says, there is certain adab you are supposed to have when you deal with a scholar, whether you like him or not, and whether sincere or collaborated. Again, a new principle. Uh, when you deal with a scholar, even if he's a, a scholar of misguidance, it doesn't matter. He's a scholar. Type, it's a sincere mistake, collaborated, intentional mistake, it doesn't matter. Those uh, crossovers, I, I would like some evidence for uh, Abu Tawbah from the Quran and the Sunnah. So you caught that, right? When Wajdi talked about Dawaman and him saying that Umar Suleiman is a fasic, okay, he just brushed it off like, you know, it was like something light to him, you know. But the moment that Sheikh Abu Tawbah said that uh, Umar Suleiman is a scholar, all of a sudden his vitriol came out. Now, why is this important? It's because throughout this entire rant, right, one of the main things that Wajdi was complaining about was Sheikh Abu Tawbu defending his boys. He's defending his boys, you know? He's defending his boys. You understand what I'm saying? You got to defend your boys. He's accusing Sheikh Abu Tawbu of that, but he himself is defending his boy Dawa man in the same video. So now you just give your opponent ammunition by default. What do you mean? Well, this is the reason why I talked about Haji. Watch this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play an extract from this video, okay? I'm gonna play an extract from this video. 
and what you'll notice is there's a cut in the video okay there's a cut in the video so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna play back my video six months ago and i'm gonna show you that that man knows he made a massive error but because he's arrogant and because he has a bunch of yes men meaning those ustad or students of knowledge who are on the payroll they must have you know got together and said oh no because he watched my video obviously hence why he cut it out so it's clear to see that he is an absolute idiot and he has no love for the Prophet ﷺ because he indirectly accused the Prophet ﷺ of shit. But let's have a listen to him first. The graves and what you do oh, is very strict. The Sharia is so strict. You can't add, you can't take. It has to be out of Sintor. Because from it, shit comes. When people die, you follow the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in how to deal with the dead. Because from it, shit comes. From it, shit, it manifests. Does that make sense? So you've got to take things in accordance to how the person did it. So that was the fourth part of the book, the reason why the children of Adam fell into Kufa. The fifth part. This video has clearly been modified from the original video, which was recorded about eight months ago or nine months ago. I think I recorded mine about six, seven months ago. Now what happened? Why did he cut that out? Because I listened to it and I spotted a huge mistake. And they go, Haji, do you know that video you did six months ago, seven months ago? That part that you found and you exposed him on is not even there no more. And I said, what? I said, you sure? They go, Haji, watch it. So I watched that clip, okay? And I noticed there was an extract missing, okay? Now my video, for some reason, my Adobe Premiere wasn't synchronizing with that, the extract, the clip that I cut out. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to present to you what I cut out, okay? Okay, what I cut out, and you listen to me for about... 10 15 seconds i played to show you that this video was six months ago and you will see the atrocious comments that he makes and we'll make a comment on it let's have a listen so without going into further details let's listen to dawa man himself basically utter some absolute nonsensical statements which would leave you shocked to your core let's have a listen when people die you follow the sunnah of the in how to deal with the dead because from it shit comes from it shit it manifests does that make sense so you've got to take things in accordance to how the person did it. When we're sad, we put our pictures of those who die. When we're sad, we go to their graves. Why is the problem? Because when you go to the grave, what are you going to do? People who talk to the dead. This is Shaykh bin Lai Azza You go to the grave and you start saying, I miss you. Allah, I wish you were here. No matter your grief and your pain and your sadness, you are talking to the dead. And talking to the dead is dua. Dua means to talk, to call. And you cannot make du'a to the dead. This is shit billah has the wajah. Anyway, he goes on and he explains it. Now, as you heard that Aman um, state that those who pass away, it is a compound on us to follow the sunnah when one passes away and not to fall into shirk. Now, which is correct. That statement is correct. Then he uttered a statement which really makes the heart skip a beat. He said that anyone that talks to the dead, that is shirk. So as you heard, I played back six, seven, eight months ago when I took that extract, it had the whole statement from Da'awah where he said talking to the dead is shirk. You see? And talking is dua. Absolute nonsense. We're going to go into it to show you now that you indirectly accused the Prophet of shirk, hence why you took that part out. So you watch my video because it's quite unique for you to take that part out, just that extra from our video. So. You and your team, if it was you, then you gotta fear Allah Azza wa Jal and you gotta make tawbah. As you can see in my hand, I've got Sahih Muslim. I did this seven, eight months ago, by the way. And I'm gonna put the original video in my clip. You heard me speak, you know, I was wearing the, the shimakh. That was seven, eight months ago or six, seven, eight months ago. But yet, you didn't come out and apologize. And don't worry, Daniel, I'm gonna address you as well, my brother. Don't worry about it. We're just gonna show you that you, Daniel, you let yourself down, man. I'm not happy. How dare you? If you think, Yaqeen and this Americanized Islam is evil and needs to be refuted, then my brother, these Badakhila super Salafis are just as bad and you went on their platform. If you don't know about them, Akhi, then you need to get behind the desk and study. With all due respect to you, Akhi. With all due respect, if you don't even know this and you're just fixated with Amr Suleiman and his likes and his cronies, etc., then that shows, Akhi, you haven't studied, bro. You have not studied. If you join Dawaman after all these cockles, I'm going to show you the tweets underneath that clarify that, you know what, you messed up, mate. And I'm going to address you as well, but let me just get to this. As you can see on screen, okay, I'm just going to uh, paste it because I want to address my brother Daniel. We got hadith number, okay, 
974. And he mentioned that Aisha radiallahu anha said that the Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, would go out towards the uh, Baqi' at the end of the night. And when he got to Al Baqi', okay, remember he said talking to the dead is shirk. When he got to Baqi', he said, What? Assalamu alaykum dara qawmin mu'mineen. So again, this is salam, no problem. We can give you that. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wa atakum ma tu'adun ghadan. مُؤَجِّلُونَ وَإِنَّ إِن شَاءَ اللَّهِ بِكُمْ لَاحِقُونَ The Prophet ﷺ said, Peace be upon you, adobe of the believers, meaning those who are believers. So that's salam. What you were promised would come to you tomorrow. وَأَتَاكُمْ مَا تُعَدُونَ غَدًا مُؤَجِّلُونَ وَإِن شَاءَ اللَّهِ بِكُمْ لَاحِقُونَ And you are receiving it after some delay. So, so, so just to clarify, he's talking to the inhabitants of Al-Baqir. And remember, it's not just one grave. Numerous Sahabas are buried there. So the Prophet is talking to a group of Sahaba. Anhu. So has the Prophet committed shirk now? Bilal, what does this have to do with Wajdi and, and Abu Toba and whatnot? Like, what does this have to do with anything? It's very, very, very simple. If you are going to hold your opponent to a certain standard, you should keep that standard for yourself. Now, Wajdi, what really was the tipping scale for him making this video against uh, Abu Toba? Is what he said about Omar Suleiman, that he's a sheikh. So he, in his mind, he is defending Umar Suleiman, who committed shirk. You understand what I'm saying? He did an act of shirk at a, uh, whatchamacallit, a protest. So now in his mind, he has to make a principles like you cannot separate the act from the actor because he wants to connect that act of shirk with Omar Suleiman. And he wants the audience to understand that. Not to mention Omar Suleiman and his positions on the LGBTQ, which has left the, a very bad taste with a lot of the Muslims. But we're just talking about this particular act. So Abu Toba calls him a sheikh. That triggers him. You understand what I'm saying? That triggers him. But what I'm saying is, if you're going to hold Omar Suleiman to the standard, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, if you are going to hold Omar Suleiman to this standard, you yourself have to hold yourself to that same standard. How many times did uh, Wajdi and Akari say that, oh, you got to defend your boys, you got to defend your boys and whatnot? How many times did he say it? You know, he's saying this to Sheikh Abu Toba like, like he's a child or something. You know, very disrespectful, very pompous. But when it comes to Dawa man, who low key accused the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Shirk six months ago, six months ago. Not a word from any single one of them in their clique. And you think that Brother Haji has a problem with the Salafi Dawa. The reason why you think that is because he's attacking who you people call Salafis. Me, I'm old school. I believe in Salafia in terms of the menhaj. Not everybody that says that a Salafi with their mouth is a Salafi. I told you many times, I don't consider those people from Spub Salafi at all. And I stand on that. Salafis aren't liars. Salafi follows, uh, Salafi fo actually follows the menhaj of the Salaf. So why are you not demanding the Dawah man to make Taubo for his action? You, yet you're, you're demanding Omar Suleiman to make Taubo for his action. This is a form of hypocrisy. 
So Allah says in the Quran, "Allahu Akbar." Nisha Khan regime. وَإِذَا كِي وَإِذَا كِي لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْمُفْسِدُونَ وَلَكِنْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ And when you tell them to stop spreading corruption in the earth, they tell you that we are the peacemakers. Verily, they are the corruption makers, but they do not actually perceive or understand it. When this ayah was revealed, it was revealed uh, when the Prophet says he just got into Medina. And at those times, you know, the Quraysh, they were very oppressive on the Muslims, as you know. So some of the hypocrites, they used to make, <coughs> excuse me, these type of working together with uh, the Quraysh. So the Muslims asked them, like, why are you causing all of this corruption? Why are you working with these people? Why did they ask him that? Because supporting the oppressor is to violate the oppressed. Ya Rabb. And what did these hypocrites at this time say? They said, we're just peacemakers. We're trying to make peace. Verily, they are the ones who are spreading corruption, but they don't even understand. This refutation Clarification culture is the new hypocrisy. Ya Salam. When you find people involved in every single fitna that comes out, you need to suspect them immediately. You see, Brother Haji, he can only go by what we say. If we have double standards, he calls it out. But remember what I said in the beginning, this clarification culture puts you in a box. So because you're in a box, you don't want to listen to your opponent. But not only that, you practice deceptive tactics to build your group and you call it Salafiyah. So this is what he sees. He sees the Salafis are practicing deceptive tactics. You, Wajdi, attached yourself to Sheikh uh, Salaf Hussein. Then you go on the internet and you start spreading facade. So the people, they see that connection between you and Sheikh Salaf Hussein. And what do the people say? Look at this man. Look what this Sheikh Salaf Hussein is teaching his students. Look at him. He's teaching them to disrespect their elders. He's teaching, he's teaching them to, um, you know, lie and all this kind of stuff. That's what the people see. So they end up hating the ulama because of your actions. And then you blame them for trying to destroy Salafiyah. <laughs> It's not them who's destroying Salafiyah. It's you, you, you are destroying Salafiyah. When you see, you see these terrorist attacks all over the world happening and the people see that a Muslim does it, it's not just those Muslims. It's all the Muslims who are doing it. So when you lie when you are treacherous, when you are disrespectful to your elders, it's not you doing it. It's the Salafis all together, Jami'an, who are doing it. And this is why they come out against you, because they see the hypocrisy plain as day. You live in a world of double standards, lies, treachery, and you call it clarification, criticizing for the sake of Allah, defending the truth. This is what you call uh, defending the truth. 
How do you defend the truth of the lies? How do you do that? Then you hide under Islamic speech. <laughs> you hide under Islamic speech because you know the general Muslim is well intentioned. When you come out guns blazing, pow, 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 two hours of vitriol and venom. You know, and I call you out for being a liar, but not just a liar, a malicious liar. A namam. All, all of a sudden, you remember the principles of backbiting. Two hours of backbiting Abu Toba. But when I call you out for it with the receipts, you remember what the sin of backbiting is, thinking that I'm going to be moved by that. Imagine backbiting a scholar for almost two hours without a single honest criticism. And when I say there's no way that this wasn't done with, with, uh, without malice, it has to be malice. You have the nerve to ask me if I looked into your heart. Okay, fine. I take it back. It was, it wasn't done with malice. Okay. I take it back. You were a very well-intentioned liar, okay? You were a good-hearted slanderer. You were sincerely, for the sake of Allah, clarifying the truth with falsehood. I take it back, okay? How's that? This is why people don't like Salafiyah. It's because of this. It's because in this new hypocrisy, they say, we are just peacemakers. We are just clarifying the truth. We are just trying to clarify the issues. That's what they say. Look at what they say. What's the difference between this speech and the speech of the hypocrites at the time of the Prophet them? Are you saying that they're hypocrites? Look, I'm not Wajdi, okay? I'm saying this is an act of hypocrisy. I'm not putting dust on it. You cannot hide behind that Islamic language with me. I will make it very plain. You are the one who believes that you cannot separate the fi'l and the fa'l. So if I say hypocrisy, you automatically say, therefore he's saying that you're a hypocrite. I didn't say that. I said this is an act of hypocrisy. When you have double standards, when you can go up and lie, when you can go up and make up uh, principles in Islam, and then when the people come out and fight you because you're wrong, you are oppressive. You have the nerve to put them in another box, like Haji being a takfiri. If he's a takfiri, is what he's saying is wrong? Is what he's saying wrong? How do you have one standard for the Salafis and a different standard for everybody else? So the Salafis are allowed to lie, they're allowed to be deceptive, they're allowed to be treacherous, they're allowed to do all these things, but everybody else is not. And when everybody else is lying and deceptive and treacherous to the Salafis, they are the liars, but we are the truthful. That's why the Dao is being destroyed, not because of a YouTuber, but because we've embraced hypocrisy. But I'm here to tell you, I haven't embraced it. I'm old school, <laughs> okay? If you a liar, you a liar, I'll tell you. This is why people have an aversion to Salafia, not because they have an aversion to the truth, but they have an aversion to the liars and the treacherous people at the top claiming to be Salafi. Double standards, lies, treachery. Dawah men, low-key, accuses the Prophet Muhammad of making shirk, 
Not a word, not even a Tauba public clarification, nothing. Just an edit of a video. Omar Suleiman does an act of shirk, which he, he doesn't know as an act of shirk. He makes a Tauba and you're still burying him. Uh, John Fontaine, why didn't you call Daniel Halkikachu to come and defend himself? Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you have him on your show to come and defend, to, to come and defend himself? But you did a two hour hit job and Abu Toba. Why didn't you invite Abu Toba? You're leaving comments on my channel. You know what I mean? How dare you go into my intention? How dare, but did you forget that you made Namima of, Dan, of um, John Fontaine? You forgot that? This is why people hate Salafia. This is why. You make one standard for the people and another standard for the Salafis, and you say that you're upon the truth. So I will leave you with that, inshallah. I know it's a little bit harsh, but look, we separate the action from the actor, okay? These are acts of hypocrisy. Lying is an act of hypocrisy. Treachery is an act of hypocrisy. But unlike Wajdi, we actually separate the action. We say this is an act of a hypocrisy. We don't say that this person is a hypocrite. And when you have these people, when you look at the Quran and Allah says that they say, you know, إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْلِحُونَ that verily we are the peacemakers. These people speak exactly like the Mufnafikun in the Quran. There's no difference between their speech. We are the uh, the ones who are clarifying the issues. We are the ones who are who are bringing uh, Islam. We just want to to bring the the truth, to make the truth successful, and they cause the most facade. And they think that they're doing good. They don't even know. They don't even have a clue that what they're doing is evil. They wear the same thobes that we wear. They have the same beards that we 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 have. They they believe and they say they believe in the same Allah that we believe in. They say they believe in the same prophet that we believe in. That was the hypocrites then. That is the hypocrites now. Do not these people say that they follow the same ulama that we follow? They say they say they follow Bin Baz, they say they follow Albani, they say they follow Uthaymin, they say they follow Muqbil, they say they follow Abdul Aziz al Sheikh, they say they follow Fo Fozan. What he says he his teacher is Fozan, and when he comes out, Ya Salam, when he comes out with a two-hour Orientalist style, uh refutation on a scholar who is uh who's from Ahlul Sunnah and the people see this what does that say about his teacher that's why they hate our scholars that's why they talk about uh the the menhech and that's why they talk about us because people like him who are at the top taking charge and didn't they took that position right if you look at what you watch these uh video he says that at the end of the video, uh, look at all the people I'm in contact with. He's legitimizing his position based on the people that he knows. And then he does something like this and the people see it because they're not stupid. They have brains. They see uh, the treachery. They see the lies. They see the manipulation and they attach that manipulation with the menhech because of them. Because they cause the corruption. They cause it. And they can't see it. How are you going to come after me going after your intention? And you have yet to make Toba for making Namima on John Fontaine. Fine, fine. You are a very well-intentioned liar. Okay? You weren't malicious. Yeah, you have the pureness of your heart of spreading that namima to bring the truth, okay? I came to you in peace and love and serenity. I leave you the same way. Please subscribe, please share, please like, please 
Patreon me. Sapana kolo bi humbik. Wa shahadu alayhi la ant. Wa stabruka. Wa tubi alayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And as far as your, your mayor is concerned, I see you should say their mayor. A man named Yorty, who has been slandering the Muslims, a professional liar, a professional liar. <laughs> who has mastered the art of using half-truth put it in the paper that they broke into our religious uh, place of worship and got records that they can use to prove that most of us have criminal records. You can't be a Negro in America and not have a criminal record. <laughs> Martin Luther King has been to jail. Please, James Farmer has been to jail. Why, you can't name a black man in this country who is sick and tired of the hell that he's catching who hasn't been to jail. Charged him with being seditious. They put Moses in jail. They put Daniel in jail. Why, you haven't got a man of God in the Bible that wasn't put to jail when they started speaking out against exploitation and oppression. They charged Jesus with sedition. Didn't, didn't they do that? They said he was against Caesar. They said he was discriminating because he told his, his disciples, go not the way of the Gentiles, but rather go to the lost sheep. He discriminated. Don't go near the Gentiles. Go to the lost sheep. Go to the oppressed. Go to the downtrodden. Go to the exploited. Go to the people who don't know who they are, who are lost from the knowledge of themselves, and who are strangers in a land that is not theirs. Go to those people. Go to the slaves. Go to the second-class citizens. Go to the ones who are suffering the brunt of Caesar's brutality. And if Jesus were here in America today, he wouldn't be going to the white man. The white man is the oppressor. He would be going to the oppressed. He would be going to the humble. He would be going to the lowly. He would be going to the rejected and the despised. He would be going to the so-called American Negro. Yeah.